So today we're going to look at solving some equations of a higher order degree. At this point we've solved a lot of quadratics or some third degree polynomials that have had GCFs that were variable terms. Today we're going to look at third degree polynomials and fourth degree t polynomials that don't have GCFs, but they do have some special circumstances. The first thing is the sum and difference of cubes. In other words, we're looking for perfect cubes as our numbers. For instance, 1, 8, 27, 81, those are all perfect cubes. And if I have one number cubed plus another number cubed, and I wanted to factor that, unfortunately the easy economic If I have one number cubed plus another number cubed, there is a formula for their factoring. And unfortunately, you're going to have to memorize that. So that formula is you take the sum of the two base numbers multiplied by the quantity of the first base number squared minus the product of the two bases plus the second base number squared. If I have a difference of two cubes, two base numbers cubed, then my factoring is the difference of the two base numbers multiplied by the quantity of the first base number squared plus the sum of the product of the two base numbers plus second base number squared. So let's take a look at our first example. In this case, I have a base number of x being cubed. And that's added to a base number of 3 cubed because 3 cubed is 27. So I use this top formula that says take the sum of the two base numbers, so that's x plus 3, and multiply that by the first number squared, so that's a squared, minus the product of the two, so that's 3 times x or 3x, plus the second base number squared. And that's all we've got. Now, that's a factoring problem. If I'm going to solve that, I do it in a similar way, but then when I set them equal to zero, I have to solve what's left. So I've got, again, a base number of x cubed, and this time my base number is 2, which is being cubed. And this is a difference, so I'm going to use the second factoring method. So I have x minus 2 times the first number squared plus the product of the first and second, which is 2 and x, plus the second term squared, which is 4. And that's all set equal to 0. Now you'll notice, if two numbers multiply to equal 0, then those two numbers could either be 0. So one possibility is x minus 2 equals 0, or x squared plus 2x plus 4 equals 0. In this case, x is just equal to 2. And in this case, notice I can't say what multiplies to 4 and adds to 2. It doesn't work. So I've got to either use completing the square or quadratic formula. Since I've got a nice even term here, I'll complete the square. So this is x squared plus 2x. I bring my 4 over, which goes negative. Take half the 2 and square it, which gets me a 1. Add that to both sides. I have the quantity of x plus 1 squared equals negative 3. Square root both sides. x plus 1 equals plus or minus i root 3. So therefore, x equals negative 1 plus or minus i root 3. So in this case, there's two solutions in this problem one of two, and actually there's three solutions, negative one plus or minus i root three. Notice the second set of solutions is a complex solution or imaginary. There's no real numbers there. So this is a little more difficult example. You'll see in this case that I have 27x cubed minus three, and in actuality, these are both perfect cubes. My base here is 3x, and that's cubed, because then I'll get 27x cubed, and my base here is 2, and that's cubed. So using the formula, 
you take the difference of the two, which is 3x minus 2, and then you'll take and take the first term, square it, 9x squared, take the product of the two, and we're going to add that, so that's 6x, plus the second term, squared. Set them both equal to zero. Then I have 9x squared plus 6x plus 4. And set that equal to zero. I'm going to go ahead and say that's x equals 2 thirds for this guy. And then on this guy, I'm going to use a quadratic formula. I don't even want to try to factor it. I could, but I don't want to. So I've got the opposite of 6 plus or minus the quantity of 6 squared minus 4 times 4 times 9 over uh, 18. So that goes to negative 6 plus or minus. It's 36 minus 144, which is negative 108, which tells me I'm going to get an imaginary root over 18 plus or minus. 108 is actually equal to 36 times 3. So this goes to plus or minus 6i root 3 over 18. I can pull out a 6 and get negative 1 plus or minus i root 3 all over 18 or those reduce and that's just negative 1 plus or minus I root 3 over 3. So here's one answer, here's the other answer. In this case, I'm just asked to factor, so I don't need to set it equal to 0, as I did in this last problem. I need the base terms, but notice I have a 6th degree here and a 21st degree here, and these are supposed to be perfect cubes. What multiplied by itself 3 times gets me 125x to the 6th? Well, that's a 5 and x squared. And if I cube that, you'll see certainly it is 125x to the 6th. 8y to the 21st, what multiplied by itself 3 times gets you that? How about 2y to the 7th? And This is a sum of cubes, so in this case I take the sum of the two bases, which are 5x squared and 2y to the 7th, Multiply that by the first term squared, which is 25, x to the fourth. Take the product of the two terms and their difference, which is 10, x squared, y to the seventh. And add to that, whoops, let's go backwards, 10, x squared, y to the seventh. And add to that the square of the last term. So that's 4y to the 14th. And that's that term factored. It won't go anymore. So now we're going to solve some equations using quadratic substitution. You'll see in this case I don't have perfect cubes anymore. I've got a fourth degree and a second degree here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say this looks a lot like a quadratic except I need a squared here. And in actuality, we could say let x squared equal to w. And if we do that, then now what I have, if I take w squared, that would equal x to the fourth. So what I really have is w squared minus 7w plus 12 equals 0. And luckily, this factors. I have w minus 4, w minus 3, is equal to 0. 
The solutions are pretty straightforward. W is equal to 4 and W is equal to 3. However, we're not trying to solve for W, we're trying to solve for X. And in this case, I know W is equal to X squared, so I can say X squared equals 4 and X squared equals 3. Solving this, I can square root both sides, so I have X equals plus or minus the square root of 4, which is 2, and X is equal to plus or minus root 3. And I have four solutions for this equation. In this problem, the factoring is going to be a little bit more intricate, so let's begin. I notice once again that I have x to the fourth is equal to x squared squared, so I'll let w equal x squared and w squared equals x to the fourth. Therefore, I have 6w squared plus w minus 12 equals 0. Since I have a coefficient out in front of the w squared, I'll use my 5 step. I've got w squared plus w minus 72 equals 0. Factors w plus 9, w minus 8 equals 0. Divide by 6, I get w plus 3 halves w minus 4 thirds so in this case bring this over so I have 2w plus 3 3w minus 4 so I check to make sure that factors. There's my 6w squared. 8 and 9 is 1. And then finally negative 12. So that checks. So now I have w equals negative 3 halves. And w equals 4 thirds. Again, I have the values of w. I need the values of x. So I go back over here. And I say negative 3 halves. equals x squared and 4 thirds equals x squared. So in each of these cases we're going to have to square root both sides. I have square root plus or minus type of negative 3 halves. This brings about an i. So I have plus or minus i square root 3 over square root 2 which needs rationalizing so this gives me plus or minus i root 6 over 2 in this problem I have plus or minus square root of 4 over the square root of 3 is equal to x so I have plus or minus 2 over root 3 again needs rationalizing and I get plus or minus 2 root 3 over 3 is equal to x. Our last example, fairly similar, except now you notice I have a sixth degree and a third degree, but still you'll notice that if I square x cubed, I get x to the sixth. So I can say w is equal to x cubed and w squared equals x to the sixth and do the problem in a similar way. So I say w squared plus 26w minus 27 equals zero. Factor to w minus 27 and w actually that's w plus 27 sorry and w minus 1 and then we end up with w equals negative 27 and w equals 1 therefore x cubed equals negative 27 and x cubed 
equals 1. So when I go to solve these and I want to find all roots, you'll notice that each of these is a difference of cubes. If I wanted just the real solutions, I could cube root both sides. But I don't just want the real roots, I want all the roots. So in this case, I have to use my sum and difference of cubes to factor. So this goes to x plus 3 times x squared minus 3x plus 9 is equal to 0. And this goes to x minus 1 multiplied by x squared plus x plus 1. In each of the cases you'll need to do a quadratic formula. So I'll say 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 4 times 1 times 9 over 2. And this guy is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 4 times 1 times 1 over 2. This will simplify into 9 minus 36, which is 27. So that's 3 plus or minus root negative 27 over 2. This goes to negative 1 plus or minus root 3 of the negative type over 2. Both of these are going to have i's in them. So this will go to 3 plus or minus. This is 9 times 3. The square root of 9 is 3. So this is 3i root 3 over 2. This I get to pull out an i. And then I can also bring down these other two solutions. So I have x equals negative 3, 3 plus or minus 3i root 3 over 2, and positive 1 and negative 1 plus or minus i root 3 over 2. That's all we've got for today. Make sure you do your connected problems and fill out your survey. Thanks.